We see cloud technology being used a lot to service banks, but how would you say banks are actually best using cloud technology? Yeah, and I think there's, there's two different pieces to this. And the first piece is all about how is cloud technology really um, affecting banks' operating models? Mm -hmm. um, because what cloud enables banks to do is to stand up new applications, new services at a pace that they've never been able to do before. And so it really is a huge disruption in terms of how quickly they can move into new services and new ways of providing products to their clients. Okay. Um, the technology side also can drive great efficiencies and take cost out. And so we see both dimensions to this in terms of how banks are adopting cloud. There's a lot of discussion around the notion of public versus private cloud. Mm -hmm. And I think the skeptics to begin with thought that banks would be slow adopters of cloud because they were so concerned about how privacy and the need to protect data would play into this. Sure. But we're seeing very rapidly the industry get comfortable with how they need to segment their data and, and be able to apply the public cloud to a lot of their business and preserve the private cloud, on-premise cloud, for smaller parts of it. Okay. You, you know, it's not just a uh, cost equation. I mean, I think that's it's kind of the, right. the, yes. the, 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 the essence of what yes. you were saying there. Uh, look, this issue of uh, regulators and sensitivity around information is really critical to understand. Uh, what the banks need to do as they move to a public cloud format is they really need to have data encryption along the way. Mm -hmm. so, so data, when it leaves the premise, needs to be fully encrypted. As it moves, it needs to be fully encrypted. And then when it comes to IBM, we have our own private network, and it's outside of the public internet. This is structurally, I think, a, a, a key differentiator uh, that's going to be relevant to banks in particular. Okay. Now, I'm always skeptical about the idea that data is going to revolutionize every business. People say it will, people collect, collect a lot of data, but we don't always see the results from that. Um, some firms' valuations are based on what it's going to deliver in the future. Where do you stand? So just take, a, just take an example, I, th I, mean, I think the one that really makes the point is, look at what's happened to Alibaba mm. and the investment management business that they set up. I mean, it's worth many tens of billions of dollars and mm. it's basically a completely data business. And I think if you wanted an example of what you could do with that information, how you could monetize that information, I mean, there, there you have it. Mm -hmm. we, we, we think banks are really, you know, at that core, they take risk. Uh, to take risk, you need to be an information-based company. True. You need the data uh, in order to really advance in that field. So I think the delay in realizing the value mm -hmm. is really just a reflection on the challenges that the banks have faced in being able to use that data not the intrinsic value of the data itself. I think the other thing as well, Sarah, is I mean, the, the way in which banks have grown over the years and the complexity that it has created, and whether that's in their legacy systems, whether the way their process is organized, what's happened in terms of data, you know, the number of data warehouses that they have. I think what cloud is actually doing is it's, it's providing the catalyst to solve that complexity. Yeah. Because to Ian's point, just transferring your business to cloud does not result in substantial reductions in, in cost. What it does do is it gives you the agility, it gives you the flexibility, all apart, fundamental part of digital. But what it also does is if you're really going to take advantage of and drive that, if, you know, that cost down, you've got to rationalize the applications, you've got to simplify the business, and it's providing that opportunity to do it. And, and now there's an incentive, and it's a catalyst. It's a catalyst it. for that change. Yeah. Let me give you an example, because I, I think it combines both thoughts that you raised, the data and the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so grid analytics, very important for risk management, pricing portfolios. Um, that high performance computing um, really works best when it's done in, in a cloud environment. Yeah. Um, you have to re-architect the applications to do that, but the cost efficiency uh, is huge because you, you only need that compute uh, capacity for a short period of time while you're doing the analytics. Uh, you don't want to make that investment and have it on your balance sheet every hour, every day, every week, yeah. uh, when you can just access it for Monte Carlo simulation or access it for pricing or access it for risk. The other thing it's doing as well is it's, it's enabling uh, you know, a lot of the industry to be able to use both APIs as well as services mm -hmm. to connect with the broader ecosystem. 
taking advantage of fintechs is becoming really important. You know, APIs are very important to be able to do that. Uh, providing a much better quality of experience to their customers, again, is, is, is fundamental. And again, cloud is providing the basis for that kind of architecture. And with PSD2, we're going to see the whole exactly right. business opened yeah. up in Europe on that basis. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. This was one of the things I was going to mention. I mean, um, you know, with that, what we're seeing in some of the European countries is that as, you know, as much of the, as 10% uh, of the logins now are coming from aggregators or other firms. Uh, I, this surprised me in terms yeah. of how quickly uh, that was changing. And it also has some risk implications, because if you think about it now, uh, sign-on credentials have been essentially um, passed out to third parties uh, that, that have access to uh, bank accounts. And if you think about the risk profile now, you used to just have to manage your customer, uh, your environment. Now you're having to think through what the implications are for uh, aggregators and other third parties that may have sign-on credentials. And do you think banks are ahead of the risk that's creating or are they just chasing it? I think at this point they're probably chasing okay. that particular dynamic. I and mean, I, I think the regulators are very focused on that too. Yeah, yeah. So, there, so there are some implications of PSD2 that um, haven't really been fully uh, um, factored into the uh, security environment and other environments. Uh, that, you know, it's great for clients to be able to transport their accounts and move financial information. Mm. Uh, but again, we have to ensure the integrity and, and, um, and resiliency of, the, of that environment. It's astonishing that the European regulation should have unforeseen consequences. That almost never happens, does it? That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.